With Gareth Bale's retirement from club and international football, this rebuild will focus on both club and country. Halfway through the season, we'll be looking to turn around Cardiff City's form near the bottom of the championship table and build a strong core of Welsh players along with other signings that tie into Bale's playing career. This correlates with the three goals I've set for this rebuild, the first of which being to win a domestic competition with Cardiff City, just like when they won the FA Cup in 1927. The second is to qualify Cardiff City for the Champions League. Bale's five Champions League titles as a player ranks him among the best in the world. And and finally, we'll be looking to qualify Wales for back-to-back -back World Cup appearances as we look forward to 2026. Budget-wise, 12 million isn't too bad for a championship side. I'm just looking to make a single addition here in January. We'll be reuniting Bale with one of his Wales teammates. And I feel like Aaron Ramsey was one of the more underrated Premier League players during his Arsenal days. His rating and pace has declined rapidly as he's bounced around clubs at Juve, Rangers, and Nice. But he's a major signing for a championship side, and hopefully he'll be able to see his return back to the Premier League within a few years. It was a 4 million deal to complete the move. Nice seemed to be okay with letting him go for less than his current evaluation. But as this is a longer term rebuild, our youth academy will play a crucial role. We do have a pretty decent player to begin with. Keep in mind, this is not a homegrown talent. Rene Meyer, a 61 rated German right midfielder with potential of 71 to 94. As we move him to a winger, and see a bit of growth throughout the first half of the season. We'll be looking to set him out on loan at a 65 overall. It's a three-star, three-star Youth Academy scout to begin with, and our first season, we'll see a scouting network in Wales as we search for any type of player. With Bale's appointment, Cardiff City seemed to have turned things around. We even managed to receive the Manager of the Month award for March, but it was always going to be difficult to recover from our first half of the season performance. We end up finishing 16th in the league, which I'll take. Norwich winning the league, Burnley receiving automatic promotion to the Premier League, and for the championship playoffs, it's Watford to defeat Preston in the final. We'll be hovering mid-table among some other notable championship sides, including the only other Welsh team in the league, Swansea City. But a surprise as West Brom see relegation to League One along with Blackpool and Rotherham United. As for the Premier League, it's Chelsea to win the title, Liverpool, Manchester City, and Spurs rounding out the top four. And relegation to the championship will go to Brentford, Fulham, and Southampton. A really solid season from Preston as they also reach the FA Cup final, but Wolves win that competition at 1-0. The Carabao Cup going to Premier League winners Chelsea. Juve defeat Dortmund in the Champions League final. Inter getting the win against Real Batiste in the Europa League. And Villarreal will defeat Fiorentina 4-3 on penalties in the Conference League final. I'm looking forward to uncovering some hidden talents in this rebuild as Callum Robinson might be that for us. 17 goals across 46 appearances. He also led the way in the assist category. And a solid first season development from our Youth Academy promoted player, Meyer up plus six to a 67 rating. We'll be looking to find an answer from a lot of our first team players actually being here on loan. Unfortunately, we've managed to uncover a solid Youth Academy player, Curtis Williams, already at an evaluation of 3.3 million. And as we get a final scouting report on him, he'll be at a 68 rating. By default, he's a left midfielder with 74 to 94 potential, and he's ready for promotion to the first team. Plenty to build upon for our manager rating, but I think we've got a plan in action for Cardiff City. We'll be looking to make the promotion push to the Premier League in Season 2 and incorporate some of our newly promoted Youth Academy players. But if you are enjoying the rebuild so far, make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And the board seems to be in line with our own ambitions as we try to sign two crucial players of the first team and gain automatic promotion via a top two finish in the league. Not too many extra funds to work with though as we've seen a slight rise to just under 15 million. But one area I wanted to focus transfers on is signing players that might be underutilized at other clubs. Mark Rodak was integral to Fulham's promotion to the Premier League in the 1920 and 21-22 campaigns. However, he hasn't yet gotten opportunities at the top level in the Premier League with Fulham signing other keepers. I want to show that he can put his trust in us as we make him our number one option, signing on a greatly reduced fee of just 5 million, as I'm assuming he's still playing a backup role even with Fulham getting relegated. I also wanted to make an effort to sign some of the top talents from the lower divisions of English football. Ronnie Edwards is actually the highest potential center back in League One playing for Peterborough United. He's had interest from Premier League clubs, including Chelsea and Crystal Palace, the latter of which already submitting a 4 million offer for his transfer. And we ended up signing him for not too much less than that, a 3 million deal, which was slightly above his evaluation of 2.8 million. But we definitely need some leadership in our defense, and Jack Stacey is an experienced right back 
playing at the Premier League level for Bournemouth, as well as several other clubs in the English football leagues. Because he was available as a free agent, we were able to sign him up as a crucial player on a three-year deal with a 20 grand a week contract. But our championship season, we'll see it start against Wigan Athletic. Here is the new look starting 11. Even with all the departures we had with Loney's contract expiring, I still think this is a squad capable of promotion. And we did secure a single point in our opener, dominating in the chances created category. It seems like Wales has seen enough from us with Cardiff City as we finally get the Wales national team offer. I knew it would happen eventually, but I'm glad we were able to accept an offer sooner rather than later. There's a lot to look forward to in the second half of the season. Not only are we in contention for automatic promotion as we currently sit second in the championship, but we're through to the semifinals of the Carabao Cup matching up against Preston, who continue to do well in cup competitions. It's worth noting that we're facing off against Spurs in the third round of the FA Cup, who's right up there with being Bale's most iconic team. Quite a few changes to our first team, actually, as on both wings, we've brought in our youth academy players. Williams up to a 73 overall. Meyer also at that 73 rating. One departure as Alsop will be joining Bolton on a free transfer at the start of season three. But we've managed to shock the world to unanswered goals as we are through to the fourth round of the FA Cup, defeating Spurs. And against Preston, we managed a 1-0 win in the first leg and a 1-0 win in the second leg, meaning that we will have an opportunity to check off one of our goals at the start of this rebuild and win a domestic competition as we face Crystal Palace in the Carabao Cup Final. With this match being played in February, who knows how the rest of the season is going to go. We've dropped down to third in the championship standings, but we'll need to put in a top performance if we want to win here at Wembley. And a lot of that will come from our defense. If we are going to score, it'll probably come via a counter attack. And just three minutes in, the ball's bouncing around outside the 18. Williams, our newly promoted Youth Academy player, already showing that he is going to be an iconic player here at Cardiff City. A long range effort, finding the back of the net. We really should have had two here with Perry NG, who's an icon of the crew mode scene and the time he spent at Cutsy's Crew Alexander series. But we push on, still looking to get that second goal, but defensively, we just keep on pushing on as we work it from the back. Collins to Rawls, our captain, finding Robinson, and now over to Colwell, one of the Welsh players in this team. He'll give us a two goal cushion as we will be celebrating a trophy much sooner than expected. Cardiff City into Conference League football next season. The world is taking notice of what Gareth Bale is doing here at Cardiff City as now Real Betis is offering the manager job. And considering this is a really talented squad that I think is capable of qualifying for European football, they should definitely be doing better than their current 10th place in the standings. But as the championship season comes to a close, we have just one fixture remaining and a crucial one against third place Sheffield United. That means all we need is a draw to secure automatic promotion and we end up getting the win. Ramsey getting the only goal. It's been a great second season with its share of surprises. Advancing to the latter stages of pretty much every competition we were involved in. Here's a final look at the standings. I don't think I've seen a team get as many points as Fulham had at the top of the table. But as for which club will be joining us in the Premier League next year, it is going to be Brentford defeating Sheffield United in the final 2-0. Relegation spots this season going to Bolton, Reading, and Ipswich, with Chelsea securing back-to-back -back Premier League titles City, Liverpool, and Aston Villa achieving Champions League spots. And for the relegation zone, it's Watford, Norwich, and Burnley. The three newly promoted sides going straight back down to the championship. Liverpool will get a win against Manchester United in the FA Cup final. They're also going to add a Champions League title as they defeat Chelsea 1-0 in the final. Napoli getting the win against Manchester United in the Europa League. And Wolfsburg were victorious over Fenerbahce in the Conference League final. What a season for Cole Will from the center attack in mid position. 22 goals is very impressive. And Rawls leading by example. Our captain equal with Robinson for the most assists at the club. But I think the difference maker was Rodok. 19 clean sheets across 46 championship appearances. 
Meyer achieving double digit growth in his rating up to a 77 overall. Williams not far behind, a plus nine to a 77. And a couple of players will be leaving at season's end. We've got Curtis Nelson with his contract running out as well as Sawyers. Both of these players overall are just dropping too much. But our manager rating getting back to where we started at, it's going to be an interesting third season in the Premier League. Plenty of question marks heading into a new season of this rebuild. Whether this team has the quality to avoid relegation is my main concern. As for board objectives, we're still looking to place a big emphasis on our youth academy and long term look to establish Cardiff City as a solid Premier League side. For the Europa League, pretty ambitious for us to try to reach the semi-final. But with Premier League promotion and also European competitions, we've seen a big rise to our transfer budget, just shy of 50 million. You can make the argument of how realistic the transfer of Kareem Benzema to Cardiff City is, but the fact of the matter is, is that we need quality and I wanted to build upon the storyline of reuniting at least part of that iconic partnership between Bale, Benzema, and Ronaldo at Real Madrid. If you were curious, Ronaldo has actually retired. I could have signed his free gen as well, but I decided against it. As for Benzema's contract, it's of course a crucial squad role on a two-year deal worth 50 grand a week. With our new number nine debuted at the club, we of course are going to keep on signing players from Wales and I was happy to see Ethan Empadu available as a free agent. Loaned out quite a few times from Chelsea. I think he deserves to be playing in the Premier League. I continue to scout out some of Bale's former clubs to sign players and with Real Madrid checked off, we can now turn our attention towards Spurs. Ryan Sessegnon not exactly playing a starting left wing back role there, but a player with a lot of potential. With the promise of European football and first team action, it's a move I was okay with making, especially with the big jump up in our transfer budget. This signing used about half of our available funds. 25 million was the finalized transfer fee, and it looks like he had his contract running out as his current evaluation is about 31 million. I keep on forgetting that whenever you retire player their regen is instantly available i think for the next time we do this sort of concept i will be signing the regen from the start but lee powell is bale's regen and he's currently playing at leeds united it's a shame we couldn't sign him on a free transfer but because we had the funds available we went ahead and brought him in on a 17.5 million transfer fee another case where his contract might have been running out with his value set at 18.5 million and of course bale got his start over at southampton why not check off another club that Bale has played for and with their relegation from the Premier League is the perfect time to bring in Armel Belokochop. The versatile center back can play on either side with his five-star weak foot and of course also a talent for the future as he's just 22 years old right now. This is a bargain of a deal. 13 million was considerably less than I thought we would have to sign him for and that shows it here. He's currently evaluated at 19 million. We of course had to let a few players go to generate the funds for those three transfer signings along with the free agent signings. Ojo's the first to leave as he joins Trabzonspor for 3.5 million. Wintel will also be leaving for 3.5 million to Vitesse. Collins is off to Germany as he joins Hamburg for 3 million. Odauda will drop down to the championship again as he joins up with Sheffield United on a 2 million transfer fee. Rodemota also establishing himself as a championship player as he signs for newly relegated Burnley for 2 million. Romeo with the move to Valo to lead on a 1.5 million deal. And finally, Phillips will be joining Copenhagen on a 1 million transfer. But it will be a difficult road ahead. We need to stick together if we want to avoid the drop. We've made a lot of improvements to our starting 11 and have moved some players around. Williams will be dropping to the midfield as he now switches over to a center attacking mid roll and we pick up a solid draw in our season opener against Wolves. Our conference league group has Charleroi, Lech Poznan, and Aberdeen to consider. The best talent at Charleroi is Jackson Chachua, the promising Belgian right wing back. Afonso Sousa is a 76 rated Portuguese talent over at Lech Poznan, and Dylan Loban is the highest potential prospect at Aberdeen, currently at a 64 overall. But we'll review results in January 2025, and we are nowhere to be found in the top eight spots of the Premier League. Not too far off though, as we currently sit mid-table in 11th. And we had a very good outing in our Conference League group, going undefeated and finishing first in our group. Some good development across the board, the new signings meshing together well with our existing players. And another manager offer coming in, this time from a Premier League side, and the team that we faced last season in the Carabao Cup final, Crystal Palace. Judging by this team, you would think that they're doing pretty well, but as we review results, they're actually bottom of the Premier League standings. Some big clubs around the world also taking notes of Meyer. 
and it's a Bundesliga offer from Bayern for our promising German winger. Had I received this at the start of the season, I probably would have accepted it, but because we are mid-season and looking to avoid the drop, I'm going to be declining for now. We will see one departure though with Sang leaving to Familia Cal on a one and a quarter million deal and two different pre-contract signings. Callum Robinson joining Valencia at season's end and Alnwick joining QPR at the start of season four. But we're into the round of 16 of the Conference League and we'll start against Stad Rene. Asim Awar is now featuring for the Liga Un side, making the transfer away from Lyon. It was a nil-nil draw in the opening fixture, but we manage a 2-1 to -one win in the second leg, and that'll see us face Braga in the quarterfinals. Plenty of good talents at the club, but I found the Julian Araujo transfer to be really interesting. He had a lot of potential just a few FIFAs ago. Seems to have dropped a bit, but he's still at a solid 77 rating. On the attacking front, though, we're having no problem as we secure a 2-0 no win in the opening fixture. But Braga bring it back in the second leg, and we end up advancing courtesy of penalty kicks. That means we'll face Rangers in the semifinals of the competition. A lot of interesting teams at this latter stage in the Conference League, and we're actually going to face a former Cardiff City Youth Academy player with Robbie Matondo. The ex Schalke man now at a 77 rating, and it was a 1-1 draw in the opening fixture, but we get the better of Rangers in the second leg, winning 2-0, advancing 3-1 on aggregate, where we'll face Mines in the Conference League final. With this being the final match of the season, we'll review domestic results, and still no top eight finish for us, but we hang steady at the 11th place spot, achieving what we set out for this season as Crystal Palace, Brighton, and Everton all seeing the drop to the championship. Sheffield United and Watford gaining automatic promotion back to the Premier League, where the other recently relegated club, Burnley, also joined them. We made it all the way to the fifth round of the FA Cup, where Newcastle United finally get the better of us. Spurs winning the competition against Newcastle United. And it was a fourth round appearance in the Carabao Cup where we lose against Watford and we again lose against the team that make it all the way to the final, except this time Watford win against Spurs. Chelsea continue to impress in this rebuild as they pick up a Champions League title and Sevilla will get the win against Lyon in the Europa League. But here's the outlook for the Conference League final. It's a solid Mainz team that will need a defeat. Advantage has to go to Mainz as this match will be played at the Waldstadion in Germany, but that didn't stop the Cardiff City fans from traveling in numbers to support their hometown club. And what a start we had as the German player in our team, Meyer, actually gets the opening goal. What a player he has been, and probably the best non-homegrown talent Youth Academy player we've managed to have from the start. Our other Youth Academy promoted player, Williams, gets the second goal, and all of a sudden, it looks like we're in the driver's seat for this one. Mine's trying to answer back, and it's Christian Kwame who actually featured in my last rebuild to get one back from Mines, cutting the deficit in half, and it should make for an interesting last 60 minutes or so. This was nearly a third for us and it was some great play, but it's called back for offside. We'll take a closer look at it. And it was indeed Williams who was about half a step in front of the offside marker. And Mines, with just 10 minutes left to go, will find the equalizer. It's going to force extra time. And if it's not decided by then, it will of course go to penalties. So far we fared pretty well on penalty kicks and looking at our selection, we've got some talented players that has to rank above Mines's. But at the end of the day, you never know how pens will go. Of course, Benzema manages to convert his to give us the early lead and Rodak with a huge save to give us the advantage. Cole will, now our captain, will get the second one and Rodak two for two on his saves. It looks like it's going to be a replica of what happened against Braga. We just convert a bunch at the beginning, and fortunately, our opponents just could not score a pen. Rodok was in their head, always guessing the right way. While winning the Conference League isn't an objective, it's a big milestone as we try to qualify for the Champions League. It's strange to say it in our first Premier League season, but I don't think we're that far off from eventually competing among some of the world's best. When you've got players like Benzema securing 27 goals despite dropping four in his rating, great things are going to happen. He was also the leader in assists, equal with Meyer. We've got one departing player, Atet, couldn't have his contract demands met. But no complaints from me, our manager rating holding steady. And we've got a new competition next season with the Europa League.
If there's one concern I have heading into this fourth season, it's that our squad won't be able to stand up to the quality of Europa League football. With that said, I am looking to make a few improvements along the way. For domestic success, we're trying to finish mid-table and not too lofty for expectations from the board as we just need to reach the group stage of Europa League. Our transfer budget actually going down this season, which is a bit of a surprise. I was holding out for another Bundesliga offer for Meyer, but that never arrived. So I figure with how quickly we're rising up the Premier League, we don't necessarily need to transfer him away. That does mean we need to be modest with our signings, and I would rather build for the future as we sign another Spurs talent with Dane Scarlett. Who knows when he might be able to feature significantly for the first team. It'll probably come after Harry Kane either departs the club or gets too old to get consistent minutes. But we're happy to have him here, as I don't see Benzema playing for too much longer in this rebuild. It was a 17.5 million deal to finalize his signature, just above his evaluation of 14 million. And we matched up against him in the Conference League, and I mentioned that he was a former Youth Academy player. Figured why not sign him for squad depth, as Matondo will be our next addition. There's a lot of upside to this transfer. He's promising, versatile, and of course he's going to add to our existing pool of Welsh players at the club. A 7.5 million transfer here as he had his contract coming to an end so we could bring him in for less than his valuation of 11 million. But another Premier League opener and this time it'll be against Spurs who we've more or less got the better of in this rebuild. It's still going to be a tough test for us to finish mid-table and try to make progress in the Europa League but we do end up getting another win against Spurs and we can review our Europa League group. We've got Braga, Standard Liege and Hearts. We played Braga last year in the Conference League and they've managed to sign another talented player with Ivan Illich. Who remembers Ricardo Rodriguez and the potential he used to have in career mode? He's over at Standard Liege at a 74 overall. And Lewis Nielsen, a pretty decent Scottish player, a center back at a 72 rating for Hearts. It's another Manager of the Month award and great timing as we head into the final month of 2025. Seven wins in the Premier League and a perfect record across all competitions. We're going to go ahead and review these results at the halfway mark, and we have found ourselves second in the table, continuing to shock the world as we also go undefeated in our Europa League group. Us and Braga will be advancing to the knockout stages, and I've got to say a lot of our success has to come from our promising Youth Academy players. We have a couple of departing talents as Adams will be leaving at season's end on a pre-contract along with Harris as he joins up with Angers. But before we can play those Europa League knockout matches, we do have another cup final, this time against Manchester United, and it's another Carabao Cup final. They're right up there with being one of the top Premier League teams and in contention with City for the title. And that showed from the result as Sancho got at least two goals to give United the win three to one. Not the result we wanted, but we can still push on as we try to check off Champions League qualification either via the Europa League or the Premier League. We'll start with the Europa League as we face Real Batiste in the round of 16, the team that offered us a job just a few years ago. They've improved their team even more, signing Bentaker, who is now at an 85 rating. And we get the better of them in the opening fixture, but Batiste draw level in the second leg, forcing penalty kicks, and finally we will fall at this stage as we just could not convert the chances we wanted. We do make up for that though in the Premier League, not winning the league, but finishing top four and checking off another objective of this rebuild, and that is to get Cardiff City to the Champions League. Burnley, Nottingham Force, and Sheffield United all seeing the drop to the championship, where Crystal Palace, Everton, and Brighton will all see the jump up to the Premier League. We make it to the fourth round of of the FA Cup losing to Bournemouth and Chelsea adding another trophy to their collection as they defeat Wolves in the final. We of course saw the loss to Manchester United in the final of the Carabao Cup. Manchester City will defeat RB Leipzig in the Champions League final. Sevilla getting the win against Liverpool in the Europa League and it's Juve to defeat Monaco in the Conference League final. It's Lee Powell's turn to step up as the top goal scorer at the club and Colwell still with some great contribution now from the assist category. But it's an end of an era for Kareem Benzema. What a career he's had spanning across three different leagues. It's a shame we can't see him compete in the Champions League one more time. Fortunately, we do have a future replacement with Scarlett who's gone up plus three in his rating over the course of the season. And on the club level, our manager rating staying steady at an 80 overall. But it's not going to be stopping there this season. We've got to consider World Cup 2026. Can we get past the group with France, Norway, and the United States? And with us making it to the group stage, we have checked off all of the objectives for this rebuild. Our starting 11 could certainly be 
be better, but I'm happy to report we've got a few of our Cardiff City players in there. Empadu starting at right center back, Williams at right center mid, and Powell at left center mid. But Norway is underrated as a long-term option in career mode. Odegaard gets both of their goals to defeat us. France, of course, one of the powerhouses, also getting a win. And similar to what happened in World Cup 2022, we'll get a 1-1 draw against the United States. Here's a final look at the group standings. France and Norway both advancing. And in a surprise, Canada will reach the World Cup final. What an achievement for them, especially with the World Cup being hosted in North America in 2026. But Portugal will end up victorious 3-1. With all our objectives checked off, I think all that's left for us to play for is see how this squad would do in the Champions League. We'll give it an honest try and see if we can shock the world once more. Not too ambitious from the board as they just want us to qualify for the Europa League and reach the group stage of the Champions League. The lack of transfer budget definitely impacted what sort of signings we can make in this rebuild, but fortunately we can make two more solid ones, starting with Nico Williams. The former Liverpool and Nottingham Forest man is now at Stade de Reims, and he is one of the top Welsh talents. In career mode, as I was looking to improve at the right back position, I felt like it was the perfect signing. We're going to bring him in on a 30 million transfer fee, more than his evaluation, but I think it's worth it long term. And speaking of Nottingham Forest, because they got relegated from the Premier League, we're going to sign one of their best players and finally bring in a left-footed center back with David Carmo. The current Porto man has Champions League football experience, which was one of the top characteristics that I was looking for in a center back. He, of course, is going to give us a boost in rating as well as he signs for 40 million, just a little bit more than his evaluation of 38.5 million. With Williams' arrival, I decided to let Stacey leave. He was an incredible player for the couple of seasons he was at the club. McGinnis also leaving on a 2 million transfer fee to Vitoria. Ollie Tanner making the move to MLS as he signs with Atlanta United for 1.75 million and Jack Simpson joining BSC Young Boys for 1.5 million. Outside of the opener against City, a relatively easy month of August for us. Here is going to be the squad that tries to compete in the Premier League and the Champions League. Still had some thoughts about whether to keep Meyer or let him go, but because I want to see how we can do at the top level and the best offer that we received was from a championship club. We're going to have one last dance with this Cardiff City squad. Unfortunately, we were not able to pick up a victory in our season opener, but we can turn attention to the Champions League group stage where we have Bayern, Club Bruges, and Shakhtar Donetsk. Bayern, an interesting situation for them at goalkeeper. They have just signed Jan Sommer from Borussia Mönchengladbach IRL, but Marmardashvili has made the transfer there in this save. Another buying keeper, Alexander Nubel, has made the transfer to Club Rouge, where he's at an 83 overall. And Mihailo Mudrik is one of the biggest names for the January transfer window. He ended up signing for Chelsea when it was thought that he would be brought in by Arsenal, but he is still at Shakhtar Donetsk in this save. It's a pretty important January transfer window. We're going to see how results are going. And again, we are top four in the Premier League, and we have finished top of our Champions League group. It was a closely contested group, but we still accumulated 12 points. I don't think we need to improve our starting 11 much, but I do want to add some squad depth at goalkeeper just in case an injury happens. And with Gareth Bale closing out his career in MLS, I thought it would be right that we sign an American player. Ethan Horvath at a 74 overall will play that sporadic goalkeeper role for us, signing as a free agent. But we'll start our Champions League knockout stage action against Borussia Dortmund. Here's a starting 11 that I think will match up pretty well against the Bundesliga side. They have managed to keep Jude Bellingham five seasons in, which is a bit surprising considering his links to the Premier League, but we get a three to two win in the first leg and a draw in the second leg, putting us through 5-4 on aggregate where we'll face Barcelona in the quarterfinals. Another MLS talent here with Thiago Almada making the signing for Barca. He's at an 87 rating and he was the key player for them in the first leg as Barca get the 3-0 win. We were never going to recover from that as we lose 5-2 on aggregate. We had some magic moments in this rebuild. Unfortunately, this season just wasn't it as we see a sixth place finish in the Premier League with Brentford, Watford, and Crystal Palace all getting relegation. Manchester United defeat City in the FA Cup. Newcastle get the win against Arsenal in the Carabao Cup. Milan defeat Juve in an all-Italian Champions League final. Chelsea get the win against Hertha Berlin in the Europa League. And Stade Rene defeat Osasuna in the Conference League. Our young talents continue to lead the way as Scarlett had the most goals for the club. It was Powell with the most assists. And we'll be signing off of this rebuild with a final look at Meyer, who's now at a 93 overall rating.